Before we get started with this video, I'm going to put a little bit of a disclosure and a um, little timestamp map thing here because this video is upwards of 15 minutes long. <laughs> that uh, this is a pretty comprehensive tutorial on the very basic boringest part of Kerbal Space Ram, which is explaining what all the buildings do and everything else because for new players. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this map out here. We've got part one, which is uh, the basics, how all the buildings work, and what you can do with them, and what everything means. Part two is going to be actually building the rocket, the first rocket that you're going to launch in a career save, or in a science save. Um, that's going to go over how to actually build a rocket, what all the tools do, what all the tabs do, what things are. Um, and then we're going to go to part three, which is actually piloting the thing, actually getting it off the ground and actually controlling it while it's in the air. Um, those are all going to have their timestamps at them, um, depending on what you do and what you don't know. Uh, go ahead and just click those timestamps and go wherever you need, find Wanderer. Um, but if you are brand spanking new and somebody recommended this video to you, that is fantastic. Please stay with the whole thing because it's pretty self-explanatory, and um, I hope that it's rather enlightening for a lot of you who may not even learn some of this information if the video was never made. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, again, timestamps right here. Um, if you are looking for anything in particular, just click one of the timestamps and that'll take you to the process. Uh, other than that, um, if all this you already need to know how to do, then uh, go ahead and skip the video because here is a uh, card that will take you straight to the next part of the tutorial, uh, which is going to be orbital maneuvering and uh, getting your spacecraft into orbit. Um, but um, till then, hope you enjoy. Hello friends, this is Avius, and uh, we're not here today in Stellar Journeys, but instead we are here in a career save, because I heard that there's going to be a lot more players at Coral Space Ram here lately, so I decided I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial series, and um, to start it off, we're going to talk about the Coral Space Center. Now to start off this tutorial, we're going to go with a little bit of the obvious. We've got the launch pad, we've got the runway, the space plane hangar, Mission Control, Astronaut Complex, um, Administration Building, the Research and Development Center, Tracking Station, and there's also the uh, Vehicle Assembly Building. Now for the launch pad and the runway, eh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You uh, launch vehicles from them. The Vehicle Assembly Building and the Space Plane Hangar correspond with the right runway. So, the Space Plane Hangar gets the runway, and the Vehicle Assembly Building gets the launch pad, because one builds rockets, one builds planes, obviously. It's of my opinion that you're going to be spending a lot more time with the Vehicle Assembly Building than the Space Plane Hangar, because, well, it's Kerbal Space Program. But now, let's go on into the tracking station. Now the tracking station, as you can see from Gene Kerman's little tooltip there, is the place where you see everything that is in flight, everything that is in space, everything that is on the surface of any planet, anything, anywhere. Mine's going to look a little bit different because I am running a modded save, and yeah. So um, the home system, you can see the home system around Carbon is going to be the Mun and Minmus. Um, these are going to be the easiest bodies for you to possibly travel to. And they're also probably going to be the first bodies that you travel to, which, you know, that's fine. But as soon as we zoom out, we've got the inner planets, okay? The inner planets are going to comprise of Moho, Eve, Kerbin, and Duna. By double-clicking, you can focus on any one of the bodies in this map view. And when you do double click them, you can zoom in on them, you can see the surface details and whatnot, uh, plan future missions and what have you. Um, but also for a lot of them, if you double click and you zoom in on them, you will notice that they also have moons orbiting them. So not only can you visit the planets, you can also visit the moons. Again, this is kind of self-explanatory, but 
I might as well go over it anyways. Who knows? A quick tip is that you can quickly switch from Kerbal out gradually by pressing the tab button. Now if you look down on the bottom right of your screen, you're going to notice three little buttons that are outlined in sort of a dark brownish color. These are going to be your ore data, your orbital data, and your planetary info buttons. Ore data is important for later game as you can establish mining outposts to refuel your future rockets. The orbital info button is not only just orbital, but it's also um, just planetary info as well uh, about the body that you have selected, and it will tell you the parameters of the planet and the atmospheric characteristics if it has one. In this window you can see the equatorial radius, or how large a planet is, the area of it, mass, the gravity amount, the escape velocity required, all that sort of things. Getting down to the nitty gritty, all you really need to know is the force of gravity, the, si the equatorial radius, and the sphere of influence, and potentially the escape velocity. Those are all extremely important to know. When you start going into more advanced missions, the escape velocity is important because it tells you how fast you need to be going to escape the SOI of Kerbin, the Sphere of Influence of Kerbin. Now you see the SOI is extremely important because without it you wouldn't have any moons orbiting Kerbin. You would just have Kerbin. So the Sphere of Influence basically keeps the moons prisoner around the, the orbit of Kerbin. Going on now, we have the last little tab that you'll see there, and it's just the planetary information tab, the lore, basically, and it's not really important unless you're playing a modded save. Now we're going to zoom out a little bit, and we've got Drez, Jewel, and there should be Elu as well, but again, I'm playing a modded save with some extra planets. This is called the OPM mod. We'll cover how to install mods towards the end of this tutorial series. Uh, but basically, those are the outer planets. They're technically harder to get to, but a lot of people say that they're kind of easy, so it's just up to personal taste, I guess. But that's enough looking around the map room. Let's instead now go to other buildings that may be more interesting so that we can get on with the story, shall we? The next building that we're going to go to is the Research and Development Building. Pardon the lag. Inside the research development building, you're going to notice a big tech tree that you can't research anything about. That's fine, and again, mine's going to look a little bit different because I'm chugging around with a good handful of mods. Now, the goal of Kerbal Space Ram is obviously to progress and earn more science and build bigger rockets and etc. You're going to have the start node, and that's going to get you all the basic rocketry that you're going to require to progress further into the next tiers, so on and so forth. And again, I, I, can't stress, just, I can't stress this enough, there's going to be parts in my tech tree that you're not going to have just because I'm running mods, and that's just that, okay? For this tutorial series, I'm going to try and refrain as much as possible from using modded parts, but that's that. Now, this is Mission Control. First thing you're going to notice, Gene Kerman is screaming at you to take new contracts, and he's sipping coffee. At least we think it's coffee. Now. The first tab that you're going to be on is the available contracts. This is where you can, these are contracts that you can accept to uh, basically progress your game. You've got active contracts, which are contracts that you take, that you've currently taken, that you have advanced payment for, that you need to finish. And then archives are for completed contracts. When you start out, you can only accept two. Now we go into the astronaut complex. This is probably pretty self-explanatory. This is where you go to hire your astronauts, and this is also where you go to review your astronauts. And you can see on the top, that is the cost of hiring a, a new Kerbinaut. Not astronaut, Kerbinaut. I didn't say astronaut. Now you notice that they all have different stats on courage and stupidity. Don't worry about that. It's completely useless. Trust me. It's completely useless. What is important, however, is the ranking that you can see with the little stars underneath. The more stars they have, the better that they can, the more things that they can do. Now the administration building, I am just going to admit I barely touch because I primarily play science mode, which basically 
gives you the need to progress science and doesn't require all the career things. But basically, what the administration basically lets you do is select little buffs here and there. Say you're looking for more funds, you can sacrifice science and reputation. Or if you need more, or if you need more science, you can sacrifice funds and kerbal availability and get science instead of all that. Uh, again, and they all have different flavors, as you can see from all the different admins, I guess, that you see up there. Um, again, I barely touch it, but it just provides different buffs, and you can see the effects on the right-hand side of the screen on what they do. And on next to the little green check mark, you can see the percentage commitment. The buffs will either increase or decrease depending on the commitment. And if you don't have any of the right points to give towards that sort of thing, then it won't tell you what it does. Now those are all the boring bits. Let's go to the vehicle assembly building. Once going into the vehicle assembly building for the first time, you'll notice that you are not greeted by Gene Kerman anymore, but instead by Werner von Kerman. Now then, you'll notice, again, I've got a lot of modded parts here, but primarily the two parts that are not modded are the Acorn and Clementine command modules. Those are going to be your two starting command modules. You can pick whichever one you want, and I most certainly prefer the Acorn. Now the tab for these parts is called the Command Modules tab, but this is also where you're going to find your unmanned probe buses as well. Now we're just going to quickly run down the rest of these tabs. We've got fuel tanks, we've got engines, command and control, etc. Fuel tanks um, you're going to use obviously to hold fuel. They, I don't think I need to explain anymore, they just, they just hold fuel. Next we've got engines. These are obviously the tools that you're going to use to burn the fuel. There are different kinds, they all have different jobs, and um, included in these are also solid rocket motors. The solid rocket motors, they have their own fuel included, so you don't need to worry about having a solid fuel tank and a solid engine. Don't need to worry about that and just slap an SRV on there if you need it. These categories are also not separated by fuel type, so you'll need to check in the description to see if they use a different fuel, but that's primarily if you're using different mods, like cryogenic engines or re real fuels or something. Going into command and control, this is where you're going to find reaction control systems, um, that sort of thing. When we, when we go further, you'll see more. Structural is basically components for just building the little bits of your spacecraft that aren't aerodynamic. Robotics, well, if you have breaking ground, you'll have robotic parts later down the line. Coupling basically allows you to separate your stages. They're very important. Payload is for you to protect your scientific instruments when you're flying up into space. That's protecting your satellites or your interstages or anything. Aerodynamics, it basically lets your rocket fly easier throughout the air. Ground is for everything that has to do with landing your spacecraft, like landing gear. Thermal, uh, thermal comes in two parts. This is a little bit of a explainy bit here. Uh, you've got basically two parts of thermal. You've got heat shields and you've got radiators, and both of them serve very different purposes. Heat shields, they protect your spacecraft on re-entry, and radiators, they help manage heat creating systems. Electrical, you've got solar panels, you've got generators like radioisotopic thermoelectric generators, or RTGs, and then you've got batteries that store charge. It's very important to have all of those on your craft. I cannot stress that enough. Communication, obviously, ET has to phone home, doesn't he? You have to you have to talk with mission control. Science, that's how you progress in the game. Um, you basically just go up in space, you use these different scientific parts, and they collect science. And you can either return it to Kerpen for maximum science gain, or you can transmit it. You'll see it later. Cargo, uh, that's for things that are stored on your craft that Kerbals can take out of the craft to use on EVA or extra vehicle activity. And then you've got utility, which is basically... Utility are things that your spacecraft will need to use in order to perform mission tasks, such as you know deploying parachutes or um, things of that things of that nature. The rest of these tabs, NFLV, um, everything like that, modular launch vehicles, all that, those are mod tabs, so you don't really need to worry about those. Uh, so basically, everything that's underneath the utility tab is going to be a mod. Again, you don't really need to worry about that. 
uh, let's go on with designing our rocket, shall we? Now the next part of this is going to be actually building a rocket. This is the part that I think everybody is here for. So um, we're starting off with the Acorn command module because it's probably the most intuitive when it comes to rocket design. This arrow is dynamically shaped, kind of like an arrow. Um, it, it's, it's small, lightweight, and relatively easy to launch. First thing that we're going to attach is a parachute onto the very top. You can see that little flat piece on top. Just go ahead and whack it on there. Um, I didn't quite show it very easily, but you can notice there's like a little green sphere. Those are uh, the attachment nodes, and um, they let you attach things that are um, structurally sound to the craft. Next, we're going to attach the science experiment. That's the mystery goo container. Um, now on yours, you might have some other experiments that are available, like a thermometer or something. I'm running a save that makes it a little bit more difficult, and uh, so there's not going to be as many things available at the start. Um, but you can see up here at the top left, we've got different attachment nodes. The first one is the attach node. It basically lets you place items. Next is movement, and you can see when you click it, you get three little arrows, and they resemble the three axes on which you can move items. Um, at the X, Y, and Z plane. Um, you can see that mine is really snapping as I move it um, to different, snapping to different positions. If you go down here to the bottom left, you can toggle snapping and you can toggle symmetry. When you toggle snapping, it becomes a completely smooth transition. As you can see there, it's now a smooth movement instead of snapping. Another way of doing smooth transitions when moving the parts is to hold down shift while dragging the, the um, translation icon, and it will do a finer sort of a increment. The next tool is going to be the rotation tool. It's similar to the translation, only you get to change the tilt and pitch at which the parts connect. And um, again, it uses the same logic as the translation tool. Um, you can either use snapping, or you can use large format, or you can hold down shift into small format uh, rotations, like that. Um, yeah, and there you can see the smooth rotation as well. The next tool is kind of interesting. So you can see, I can take off parts from this capsule and all that. You can see those green spheres from before, they sort of cement an attachment. But if I click on the Acorn command module, it takes all the parts with it. That's because the Acorn command module is a root part. Well, the re-root tool, if I select the rooted part, you can notice that other parts that I can find as a root light up in blue. Now, I can remove the Acorn capsule, but you can see there's a bit of a bug there. Um, may not have it for you, but it's very clearly happening for me, so I'm going to have to restart this build real quick. But that's how you reroute parts. Just be aware sometimes they can cause problems. This time I'm going to use this nifty little inline mystery goo containment unit just so that we can keep the capsule kind of aerodynamic. You may or may not have this. I can't remember if it's a modded part or not. And you can also see on the bottom of that menu there were buttons on the very bottom to change the color, but we'll cover that in the, in the video. This is just starting the first flight. You can see that when you right click on different parts, you can see different um, different attributes. I'll take the parachute for example. There's minimum pressure, where when you increase that, it basically says the parachute can't open until it reaches this pressure and whatever. Altitude, well, that's the altitude to which the parachute fully deploys to slow down the spacecraft. And there's spread angle, so um, I will explain spread angle in a different video because it's a little bit more of an advanced topic. Next thing is inside this properties window, you can say deploy mode, you can, and it will toggle between when safe, when risky, and immediate. Um, when risky is um, when you deploy the parachutes, they will either have a blue icon, yellow icon, or a red icon, or they might just be white if you haven't deployed them yet. The yellow icon means that it's risky. Basically, your craft is basically flying pretty fast, and it can, the parachute can break.
Now that we've basically got the mission payload segment completed, uh, we need to work on the rest of it. Now there's no heat shields, so technically we can't leave the atmosphere because we would heat up. Um, I also kind of forgot that at this tech level, you don't really have any decouplers big enough to attach to the bottom of the uh, command module, so this is going to be a really basic little firework good net. So we're going to go to the um, solid rocket booster engine tab. We could go with fuel tanks, but those are a little bit high powered for now. So we're just going to go with solid rocket boosters, and we're going to use the vanilla, I think they call it the flea booster, and we're going to use that because it's relatively easy, you don't have to worry about throttle or anything. Now you'll notice down here in the bottom right, you've got some icons when you hover over on different parts of the spacecraft lights up. Those are your staging icons and the order at which it's deployed. Now in its current format, basically both of these are going to deploy at the same time. So if you see that little plus icon on the bottom right, um, when you hover over the big orange tab there, you click that and you get another stage. Then you click and drag the icon into the other stage and now you've got two stages. When you press spacebar the first time, the rocket will go off. When you press it the second time, the parachute will come out. Fairly simple. Now this is just a little pro tip here. This rocket is going to fly unlike other kinds of rockets. So one thing that I can recommend is to give it some uh, control fins on it so that it can fly a little bit more stable because this shape is extremely aerodynamically stable. It's shaped like an arrow. Um, and so what's basically going to happen is when you fly up, it's going to pitch over and it's going to start going faster. And if you don't deploy the parachute early, you could end up with a situation where the parachute just won't open and you'll crash. So uh, make sure to deploy the parachute early. Last thing I'm going to do, just because it's a good habit to make, is just to save it. I don't know, I mean, you don't have to save a rocket like this, but it's always a good habit to save it in case you are making something bigger and you just forget. So now, let's go to launching and uh, we'll go over to basic flight controls. Now here we are on the launch pad. Exciting to launch this little tiny little thing. Um, we're going to go over a few things before we actually fly because I'd really hate to not know how to fly a rocket before launching it, right? So, um, as you can see, the first thing that you're going to notice is right here in the middle is going to be your nav ball. Here you can see you've got throttle control, which you control with shift and control, or you can control it with X and Z. The other side is going to be the G-force limiter, and um, your Kerbals have G-forces that they can withstand, and if they go over that for too long, they'll black out and you'll lose control. Um, you'll notice on the side here you'll have some different buttons. I have a ton of them because, well, I've got mods. On the left of your screen, you'll see the staging controls, you'll see different staging mode controls, and you'll also see indicators that tell you where your control vector is. If you press a little button that says certain numbers M slash S, that's certain numbers meters per second. That's how much fuel you have remaining, or delta V. Um, in the next episode, we'll talk more about that in a little bit more depth. Not, not too exhaustive, because I'm not a rocket scientist. At the top of the screen, you'll notice that there's another display. Um, there's a little fold-out thing for aborting the mission. There's three action groups, lights, brakes, and landing gear. You'll also notice that there's a uh, number ticker that is your altimeter. You've also got a uh, vertical speed indicator, and you've got an atmosphere indicator. Two of the more important controls that you're going to need to know is the control of SAS, or Sickness Avoidance System, and RCS, Reaction Control System. The SAS basically keeps your rocket pointed in the direction that it was when you stopped controlling it, and RCS is for when you're in space, wings don't really work anymore, do they? So instead you just have to have little engines on your capsule, they use monopropellant, and on this model you can see there are some little ports for it, but there's none. Um, now for flying, 
you can see I'm changing the indicator using Q and E for roll, for yaw, and uh, for pitch using uh, the WASD and Q and E keys. Uh, Q and E controls roll, WS controls pitch, and A and D controls yaw. Um, if you press M, you can also go into the map view. Uh, that's going to be very important later on for doing more advanced missions rather than this. RCS and SAS can be toggled using hotkeys, uh, R and T respective, respectfully. Um, another thing to note too is that the altimeter at the very top, you'll notice, has a little blue button on the left side. That's because it's got two modes. It's got surface altimeter and it's got sea level altimeter. The surface altimeter is always going to be a little bit more accurate because it actually detects the surface, so we're going to leave it at that. And now finally, the last control is the stage key. If you press spacebar, it'll fire the next stage. SRBs don't have throttle control, so when you press spacebar, the rocket's going to take off. Just like that. Now that you're flying, uh, you can use the uh, WASD keys to change your pitch and yaw and roll and all that. You can see I'm trying to do that now. It's always a good idea to pitch uh, towards the 90 degree mark um, on the nav ball. You'll notice that they have different numbers down there. Just go towards 90, but don't go too fast. Um, and you can see our engine is already cut, but I've still got some particles going out. That's another bug that I need to work out. There's too many bugs. Um, but uh, you can see I'm moving my my uh, controls around and we're wobbling around all over the place. That's great. We know how to control a rocket now. That's fine. Um, the next thing that we're going to cover is now that we are up here at, uh, I'd say, a good up here, a good 12, 120 or 12,000 meters. Um, Gonna go ahead and deploy the parachute since you saw it there it was safe to deploy. And now that we just gently drift back down towards the surface, we can um, start doing more science things. There's two ways of performing science, but for this time, we're just going to right click on the capsule that has science, and then there should be a button that says do something sciencey. Like on here, you can see there's lights on, toggle torque, all that things, but we're going to do a crew report. Now you can see we have this new window. This window here, we can either reset the experiment, we can keep the experiment, or we can transmit the experiment. And you can see we'd be getting 3.5 or uh, 1.5 science either way. Is it 3.5 or 1.5? I can't remember. But either way, we can't transmit it. You can see up there on the top left with that little UI, where it says Data RX cannot transmit science. You need to have arrows going both ways. But right now, we just have um, Kerbin communicating with Pod, but the Pod can't communicate back. So we're just going to keep whatever experiments we can. Here's a perfect example. You can see we can't really keep can't really transmit that one, so that's fine. Um, you see it says 42% science value, so you can't really transmit it for that. Um, so now all the experiments are kept safely inside of the spacecraft, and now all that's really left to do is just to safely drift back down to Now this process can be very slow, so thankfully uh, we have, if you hover over the timer, we have a uh, time warp in atmosphere and close to the surface there's physics, and in space there's just regular old time warp. Now you can see we finally dip down a thousand meters and the parachute deploys. Now that's done. Uh, the hotkeys for time warp, if you ever need it, are going to be comma and period, or the um, greater than or lesser than sign. And we're just going to we're just going to go ahead and use the UI this time since it's easy to see. And then once it lands, you're going to splash down, and that's when you know that your mission is accomplished. Once you've splashed down and you've really like stopped moving a whole lot, you can hover over the altimeter and you can get two options: either go to space center or recover the vessel. Since this is a finished mission, we can recover the vessel, and we should get all those wonderful science gains. Here we are back at the KSC, and you can notice that we have some new things to mess around with. 
Uh, you can see here a full report on the experiments that you've done, the science that you've gained, and the total science that you have on the bottom of the screen. And you can also see it on the top of the screen. Um, you can see also that we've got an increase in reputation. That's that little bar up there at the top, and an increase in funds. If you were, if you noticed, if you cared about that. Um, when you press the next button, it'll go through parts and crew. Um, there's the funds. Now you can see the part value and the little green plus 575, for example. Um, if you return a part completely intact to KSC, you'll get refunded for the entire value of that part, give or take. Um, that's why it's very important to return as much of the spacecraft as you can. Um, you're also re refunded for any fuel that you don't use, so that's that's a good thing to know. But now that we have that, um, let's go on to the research and development uh, building and finish off this tutorial. Here inside the R&D building, um, we've got this 27.5 science points that we can spend, and you can see that basic rocketry and engineering on 101 require five science. So that means that we can afford both of these nodes. If you want to unlock it, just click the blue button and you unlock the node. Uh, once you've unlocked them, uh, you'll notice that there are other nodes, uh, survivability, aerodynamic stability, and basic rocketry that you can unlock as well. Um, since we've got a good amount of science, um, we can unlock survivability, but here's where game strategy comes in. You don't have to purchase survivability, but you can instead do another basic mission and then you can unlock those other rocketry perks as well and potentially unlock survivability as well. But for me, I like to do researching survivability so that we can do more advanced missions earlier on. Oh, and the last thing that we need to do, that flight finished off two of our contracts that we had. So we're going to go back to mission control and now you can see a lot more missions are available. You can also see in the archives, those are the completed missions that we have. And then if we go to active, there are no more active. So now we can take on two more missions. We have all these that we can pick from, but I am going to pick the ones that should probably have the best payout for us. Uh, those two are going to be Escape the Atmosphere and Orbit Kerman. But for now you can see they've got like different contractors and all that, but we're mainly going to do Escape, Escape the Atmosphere because by now, with Engineering 101, we should be able to do that. You can see that the contracts have a completion reward, and uh, they've also got advanced payments as well. Um, that's very important because the advanced payments basically give you a budget at which to do the mission at. Uh, that's basically how you play career. That's why I don't really play it very often, just because I like to enjoy Global Space Rim. I don't want it to be a chore. So, uh, we're going to take the two contracts for escaping the atmosphere, and we're going to take orbiting Kerbin. And that leads me on to the conclusion of this tutorial. Um, next time we're going to be going into orbit, and um, once there we're going to be discussing um, maneuver nodes and safely returning to Kerbin. But uh, until then, this has been Savius, signing off.